Hi there YouTube friends, Carlos Arisate and welcome back to Mom's Greek Kitchen, the channel where I teach you my mom's Greek recipes in her memory. Well, I'd like to wish you all a happy new year because this is, uh, today is uh, January the 18th, 2021. Um, so happy new year to everybody and let's hope that this year goes a little better than last year because uh, last year was a doozy. Uh, I also apologize for uh, being away for so long but somebody had to go in for surgery. So uh, yeah, 2020 was not a good year. <laughs> uh, I'm okay, everything's good and hopefully we'll get back to uh, a more uh, regular schedule. Um, what else do I want to tell you? That's about it for now. Today we're making stifado. Stifado. Stifado is another uh, classic. Um, anybody who knows anything about Greek food will probably have uh, heard of it. Um, it's very similar to the coquinisto method of cooking, except that this is done in the oven. Um, it uses the same flavorings, but it also adds some vinegar. And it is a meat dish cooked or braised with. Um, like a, the medium small onions or shallots in our case today. Um, you could do it with like the little pearl onions, but that's a lot of onions to peel. Um, so the onion is your vegetable uh, that goes along with your sauce and the meat of your choice. Um, because it's a braise, it's great for the uh, drier meats like uh, uh, game meats, uh, game birds, um, older, like a, a older sheep if you're having mutton, or things of that sort, but it oh, worked great for pheasant, um, that kind of stuff. Um, however, we're making it with beef, which is just fine. I don't think mom ever made it with chicken or pork. It's always been uh, beef or game meat or game birds or something of that sort. Um, so you're welcome to use anything that you have. Um, uh, it's obviously a dish that is uh, has lots of onions in it, so if you don't like onion, it's not a dish for you. Um, so, um, what else do I need to tell you about stifado? I think that's about it. So let's go into the kitchen and I'll show you how to make it. Alright, see you soon. Hi there, um, my camera didn't turn on when I wanted it to turn on <laughs> to show you uh, what I was going to do. But this is basically an inside uh, inside round uh, roast. Um, you want to use uh, a meat that has uh, a bit of um, toughness to it, like a chuck or something of that. You don't want to use a really good cut of meat that would be like a, like a barbecue or grilling or steak type of uh, meat. You want something that will take the time to cook and release a lot of more flavor. Like you wouldn't waste a prime rib for this. Um, it's also a great uh, preparation for meat with bones like uh, neck bones, the shoulder blades, um, the hocks, the, um, it would work great for like uh, oxtail, things of that sort. So you know your sort of less desirable cuts for say like a, like a, a steak or you know some, like something on the barbecue. You want something with a little bit more um, connective tissue, a little bit of fat, all that kind of stuff. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to season it, salt and pepper, both sides or all sides, and then we're going to brown it off. We're going to brown it off in olive oil. You want sort of, you know, a goodly sized chunks. You don't want them huge because you want them to all, you know, cook about the same time. Um, if they're pieces with bone that don't, uh, you can't cut any further, that's okay because it's the meat that you want to cook. The bone is just in the way. Um, and I'm going to set up to fry this and I'll be right. All right, we're back. My 
pan is just getting up to temp here. I'm going to add some olive oil. You can go generous because this will be the oil for the rest of the dish. You're going to also fry the shallots in this as well. And the, um, the onions for the actual um, um, sauce. We want a nice uh, hot pan so we get a nice sear when the uh, meat goes off because we want to get that nice browning, uh, the Maillard reaction as they say, to go, um, which adds a lot of flavor to your, uh, your cooking. Anything with meat, you want to brown off nicely. Now I patted the meat dry so we don't get a lot of splattering. So I'm also going to do this. Keep the splatter down a bit. Alright, let's check on our beef here. There we go. We want some nice browning on our, on our meat. Brown all sides, if possible. We can get our outside so we cook as hot as our inside. All right, let's check on our beef. I think we're doing pretty good here. Nice and brown all over. Turn you over a little bit. As soon as uh, these come out, um, I'm going to uh, put the um, shallots or the onions, whichever one you're using, and you want to brown them for a few minutes. Let's turn you off. All right. So set your meat to the side for now. And let's get this out of our way. And I will show you the shallots. So our shallots are, um, or small onions, um, you want them about this size. An onion about this size or slightly bigger, but you don't want them too big because they'll take too long to cook. So for me, the easiest way to deal with them is to top and bottom. You want to leave the root intact if you can. And then I put a cross in them and go in about the depth of your blade. So that's about a half inch or so, or a centimeter and a half. That makes it easier to peel. And it prevents them from, uh, when they cook, they uh, build up pressure and it will sometimes eject the center of the onion out and you'll have a hollow. Uh, and um, you don't want that to happen. And by cutting them into four, it tends to, or cut the peel in four at the top, it makes them uh, much easier to peel. So I'm just gonna finish peeling this guy here. And I will add them to the others that I have prepared here. So, you know, somewhere along this size is sort of what you want, either in onions or in, um, in the shallots. If you do use the pearl onions, I think they would probably get too mushy actually. So I'm going to take that back and um, not suggest you use pearl onions. All right, let's bring our uh, 
Skillet back. Hot oil, hot oil. And we'll turn it back on. Not as high as we had it for the um, the beef or the meat that of choice. But we'll add our shallots in carefully so you don't get splashed. And we're just gonna par cook them until they get a little bit brown on the outside, again for flavor. They'll finish cooking in the oven. This is just for flavoring. These ones shouldn't splatter. All right, let's see how we're doing. There we go, a little bit of color. You want to get some even browning all over. Move the ones that are brown to the outside, for instance, in my case. And bring the ones that need a bit more to the inside. All right. Our onions have had enough color. I'm going to turn our heat off. Take them out, let them sit on the side for a minute. Let the um, the oil uh, settle out, and then you want to take off the top of the, to take the clean oil off, leave the burned bits behind. Um, we can have them later, but for the first part, we need the oil kind of clean. So you like. That's what I was talking about, where the uh, onions sort of push themselves out. The slit helps, but it's not perfect. <laughs> All right, set those aside. Take our oil, let that sit. And I'll be back with the next step. All right, we're back for our next step. And we're going to start uh, sweating our onions for our sauce. And that's a, a large onion, finely chopped. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of water, maybe a tablespoon or so, two tablespoons. And we're gonna cook that uh, until the uh, water completely evaporates. And uh, we'll go from there. Alright, our onions are now dry. I'm going to add back in our oil. And we're going to saute until the onions brown. So, um, have you noticed I have a uh, a cast iron um, roaster or pot, whatever you want to call it. Um, you want something that's um, oven safe uh, that you can put a lid on because uh, you want this to be a nice slow uh, braise. Um, you could do it on the stove, but uh, mom always did this in the oven, so I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah. All right, our 
onions are nicely browned. I don't want them to burn. I'm going to add, um, I've got about four large cloves of garlic here. We're going to add them. So as you can see, this is starting very much like the uh, croquini stove. It actually goes pretty much all the way like croquini stove until the uh, onions and the very end when we add the vinegar. But it tastes quite different, so it's enough of a change, I guess. I'm also going to add some salt and pepper here. Give our sauce a head start. We'll check our uh, seasonings later. Okay, and now we're going to add our dry spices. So we've got some bay leaves some cinnamon, and some whole cloves. I'm going to stir fry them a few seconds or so until the uh, oils start to release. That changes the smell immediately. If uh, you have a cast iron pot and it's not well seasoned, I would not recommend it for this recipe because we're going to be adding tomato paste, which has a, uh, it's an acidic uh, component, which will make your sauce taste quite uh, metallic. Um, if you have uh, coated enamel, that works great. Um, aluminum or stainless steel, that's perfect. But um, yeah, unless your cast iron is well seasoned, um, I would not do anything with acid in it. All right, now we're going to add our tomato paste. We'll cook that off a bit to get rid of the uh, the raw flavor. So that's a, a small can, a whole small can of tomato paste. You want to give it about a minute. All right, that looks good. Now add a little bit of water. Break that uh, tomato paste up a bit, get it nice and runny. All right, we'll add some more water. All right, now we're gonna add our onions back in, or our shallots in this case. And from now on, we don't try and stir this too much because it will break the onions up too much. We're going to be gentle with it. We're going to add our meat back in and any juices that have collected. Nestle them nice and nicely into the liquid here because you want them to be, remember we're doing a braise, so we want them in liquid. Add more water if you think you need it, and I think I'll add a little bit more. It will be in the oven for up to 90 minutes, 2 hours, depending on the size of your meat and what meat it is. So game meat will take longer. Uh, this was, um, this was uh, actually Angus beef, um, Just that's all I could get. Um, so it should only take an hour, I'm going to guess, but so just judge, you can always come and add more liquid if you need to, um, but check it every once in a while. I'm going to start with that amount, um, and if it uh, evaporates too much, I'll add some more. Okay, so I'm going to bring this back to the boil, I'm going to cover it, and then I'm going to put it into a preheated 325 degree oven. 
I will check mine at 45 minutes because like I said it's not a, a really tough cut of meat um, but you want the meat to be fork tender you want the onions to be nice and soft and you want the sauce to reduce slightly all right so I will be back when I'm ready to put it uh, or take it out of the oven or sorry I'll be back when it's ready for the next step all right we're back it's been a uh, hundred and ten minutes so almost two hours um, it's gonna take just a bit more as they say so here I've got some white vinegar two tablespoons and I'm just gonna drizzle it over the stifado the I tested the meat it's quite tender the onions are falling apart which they're supposed to just gonna gently stir it around so the vinegar gets dispersed through and I'm gonna put it back in the oven for another 10 minutes and I'll be back to show you to uh, taste it and give you my opinion and we'll go from there all right so I'll be right back all right and there we are here is our stifado uh, just out of the oven as you can see it's very tender our onions are also very tender um, normally mom always served it with lots of bread on the side uh, for dipping etc that's your starch um, we would have it with uh, maybe a salad or some cut up um, you know, tomatoes and cucumbers or something like that um, cheese or olives or anything else to round out the meal so let's taste it see how how close I got to mom's gonna be hot yep that's just the way it should be very tender very hot a little bit of the onion here so the vinegar just gives it a slight sharpness it's not like sour it just uh, perks up the flavor a bit. Because with all the onions, it's without the vinegar, be actually quite sweet. So that sort of just rectifies the flavor. So um, I hope you try it. It's really tasty. Especially if you like onions. And it's great, like I said, for any of the tougher meats or drier meats like gay meats. I think it was I think that's why this recipe was actually developed um, so if you try it let me know tell me how it came out um, and if you like the video give it a thumbs up please subscribe if you haven't share it with your friends we're at uh, 401 subscribers I'm like blown out of the blown out of the water people thank you very much for your kind uh, kind patronage the uh, channel and I will see you next time Take care and bye-bye.